Today is the sacred assembly of the day of Pentecost. In the Old Testament times, this feast was called the Feast of Weeks. On this day, all the children of Zion received the Holy Spirit from God. However, if we keep the Holy Spirit only within us and do not use it, it will be meaningless. The fire of the Holy Spirit will be put out unless we use it. Then, what should we do? We should use the Holy Spirit for preaching the gospel diligently. With the power of the Holy Spirit, we ought to deliver the good news of life to all seven billion people in the world who don't know the new covenant. Let us all proclaim the news about God the Father and God the Mother to all people so that they can know about God and Zion and prepare for salvation. First, let's find the meaning of the day of Pentecost both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Let's take a look at Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, count off seven full weeks. When is the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering? It is the day of first fruits, and the day after the Sabbath is Sunday, right? From the day of first fruits, that is the resurrection day, count off how many weeks? Seven weeks. A week is seven days. Then, seven full weeks are seven by seven, 49 days. So, count off 49 days. Count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then, it becomes the 50th day. In Greek, Pentecost day means 50th. So it is called the day of Pentecost. Let's see verse 16 again. Count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. Verse 17. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two tenths of an ephah of fine flour, baked with yeast, as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Present with this bread seven male lambs, each a year old and without defect, one young bull and two rams. They will be a burnt offering to the Lord, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Then, sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering and two lambs, each a year old, for a fellowship offering. Like this, in the Old Testament times, they counted off seven full weeks from the day of first fruits. Then, on the day after the seventh Sabbath, when it became the fiftieth day, they presented an offering to God. This was the Feast of Weeks. Let's see the background in this feast. The Israelites came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea. After crossing the Red Sea, on the 50th day, Moses went up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments for the first time. To commemorate the day when they received the first Ten Commandments, God appointed the day as a feast. It is the day of Pentecost. In the Old Testament, it was called the Feast of Weeks, but it was called the day of Pentecost in the New Testament. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 and see what kind of work happened on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it reads, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. The day of Pentecost is another name for the Feast of Weeks in the Old Testament. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. 
Receiving the Holy Spirit of the former reign on the day of Pentecost, they proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ in other languages. As the Spirit enabled them, it happened by the power of God on the same day as today, 2,000 years ago. Let's continue with verse 5. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthian, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. The first work that was done after the Holy Spirit of the former reign was given was preaching the gospel. Along with Peter's preaching, the gospel was preached to many countries. Such a great work of God began through the Holy Spirit of the former reign that was given on the day of Pentecost. Before they received the Holy Spirit of the former reign on the day of Pentecost, what had happened to the church? Jesus was persecuted and crucified. The saints witnessed that with their eyes. Jesus dying on the cross was a great issue in Israel. The members of the early church fell into great grief. The Lord, whom they believed as the Savior, was captured by the Roman soldiers so easily and he was ridiculed and crucified. Seeing all these happen, they lost their strength in faith. They all had forgotten the mighty power of God who fed 5,000 people with five barley loaves and two fish. In this situation, the church was grief-stricken. However, in three days, God changed everything. When Jesus rose from the dead, what happened to the church that was fallen into despair? They experienced the great and amazing miracle of God and confirmed their faith through God's mighty power of resurrection. Our God is the true God who governs death and life. On the 40th day after resurrection, Jesus showed them His ascension and said to them, Go into Samaria and to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel to all nations. Preach everything just as you saw. You are my witnesses. Giving these instructions, Jesus went up to heaven before their eyes. As the saints saw even these things, they gained greater faith. When Jesus died on the cross, they were in a panic. However, He was resurrected on the third day and appeared to His disciples, giving proofs that He was alive. And on the 40th day, 
He ascended to heaven on the Mount of Olives. The believers in Jesus saw His ascension. How amazing it must have been! They could have living hope for ascension. We too will be able to change and go to heaven like Christ. With Jesus' resurrection, the church was no more in grief, but had hope and energy and greater faith. On top of that, they witnessed Jesus' ascension. They exclaimed, Wow, the Lord is surely the true God. He is God Almighty. They gained much realization and faith. After that, they prayed for ten days earnestly. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon them. All the hardships were temporary. God's blessings and gifts continue one after another. The resurrection, the ascension, and the Holy Spirit of the former reign. At this, the early church was encouraged greatly, and the saints fulfilled their duties as the witnesses of Jesus. As they received the former reign of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, amazing work of God occurred day after day, beginning with Peter's preaching. 3,000 people repented in a day, and the number of those who believed in God increased. The day of Pentecost was a day when all the early church members began to experience such joy. Let's continue with chapter 2, verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. In the King James Version, it is recorded as the third hour of the day. If you add six hours to the Jewish hour, you can get today's hour. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. On the Pentecost in the age of the sun, the disciples shouted, Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. Today, when we receive the Holy Spirit of the latter rain on the day of Pentecost, we should all shout aloud, Be saved in the name of Father Christ An Sang Hong and the name of New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother. Right? In the age of the Father, prophets shouted, Be saved in the name of Jehovah. In the age of the Son, prophets shouted, Be saved in the name of Jesus. Then, in the age of the Holy Spirit, we should shout, All mankind, receive salvation in the new name, Father Christ and Sang Hong, and the glorious name of New Jerusalem, Heavenly Mother. Two thousand years ago, those who believed in God Jehovah, such as the Jews, the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law, had never heard of such a teaching. It was a totally new religion that they had never seen nor heard of. Let's see what happened after people heard the news that Peter and other eleven disciples proclaimed. Verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off 
for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord did what? The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. When we receive the Holy Spirit on a day of Pentecost, the job we should do is to become the witnesses who testify about God. As the saints of the early church were the witnesses who testified about Jesus, so we should be the witnesses of the new name and the new Jerusalem. Right? Let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 1. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. Judaism, the establishment of that time, kept hindering the apostles from preaching about Jesus Christ. Although the Jews spread many false rumors, speaking ill of Jesus, the apostles didn't stop preaching what they witnessed and all the things that they were taught directly by Jesus. As the refreshing truth of life of God spread to those who were tired of all the contradictions and corruption of Judaism, such amazing number of 3,000 or 5,000 people believed a day. When the saints gathered in Mark's upper room and prayed, it was only 120. Since then, however, the number of people who believed in God increased remarkably. God opened the way for more believers to be found. They testified about Jesus. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is God. Although He came to this earth in the flesh, he is God, the Creator, who made the heavens and the earth. When they preached this boldly, 3,000 or 5,000 people repented of their sins. In this age too, when we become witnesses who testify about Christ An Sang Hong, who is God in the age of the Holy Spirit and the New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, seven times more people than 3,000 or 5,000 a day will repent of their sins. Let us absolutely believe that such an amazing work will occur in this age. Let's continue with verse 17. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people. Now, our Church of God keeps spreading to the whole world and many people come into the truth. Then, Satan stirs people to think, Oh, we must not stand still. Let's stop people from entering that church even by branding the church as a cult and making people abhor it. In the days of the early church too, having the same method, Satan tried to block the light of the glory of Christ. Let's see verse 17. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. They said, God said 
Be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth and preach the truth of life. But you say, do not speak or teach at all in His name. Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. Let's go to verse 32. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. As the gospel of the early church spread constantly, the number of people who believed in God increased day after day. At this, the Jews who believed in Judaism were perplexed and distressed. So they plotted many things to stop the apostles from preaching and put them in prison. However, the harsher they persecuted them, the more the gospel spread. Let's see Acts chapter 5, verse 28. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And verse 29, Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. They threatened the apostles and even tried to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered the men to be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, all his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas, the Galilean, appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to do what? Not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped. What? Never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. This was the power of the Holy Spirit of the day of Pentecost. Day after day, they prayed hard and kept preaching. Jesus is the Christ. He is God. You must believe in Jesus to be saved and to enter the kingdom of heaven. They kept spreading this news to all the people in Israel. Then, today, what should we do on a day of Pentecost? We shouldn't just ask for the Holy Spirit saying, please give us, give us. The reason God gives us the Holy Spirit is to let us become His witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That is why God pours out the power of the Holy Spirit upon us. What if we remain quiet after receiving the Holy Spirit? It will be put out. It is just like burying one talent in the ground. In the days of the early church, there were many hindrances from the people who claimed to believe in God. Though they tried to hinder the work, no human method, trick, or scheme could stop the work of God. A Pharisee named Gamaliel said, Let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, 
it will fail soon. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men, no matter how hard you try to destroy them, no matter how great power you may use, you can never destroy them. The Bible says, day after day, in the temple courts from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Brothers and sisters, God declared preaching to 7 billion people and entrusted this mission to us in Asia, Africa, Oceania, Europe, North America, South America, North China, South China, North India, South India, Russia, and Brazil. God establishes churches one after another around the world. God has granted many churches as the advanced base of the gospel in the whole world so that we can gather good fruits in the spiritual barn. Now, all local churches should arise, Africans in Africa, Oceanians in Oceania, Europeans in Europe, and we living in Songnam City should arise now. The city of Sangnam is a heavily populated region, and so we have many Zions. If each Zion works even a little bit harder, the mission will be completed soon. If we finish the mission in Sangnam, we can finish it in Korea, and furthermore, in Asia. If we finish all in Asia, we should go to another continent. If Africa needs help, let's go to Africa. If Europe needs help, let us go to Europe. If North America needs help, we will go there. God said to us, His last people, be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Go and make disciples of all nations. Let us make disciples of professors, doctors, and high-ranking government officials as well. Before the words of God, all can be disciples. That's why God said, Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I taught you. If you are taught the Sabbath, teach them the Sabbath. If you learned about the Passover, teach them the Passover. If you learned about God the Mother, let them know God the Mother. And if you learned about God on Sang Hong, go teach them as you learn. Day after day, they never stop teaching and preaching. Then what blessing did God give them? God added to their number daily those who were being saved. This year, let us make all 7 billion people hear the good news of God so that no one will say, I couldn't believe because I didn't hear it. By working hard, let us experience the power of God. The proof that we receive the Holy Spirit is shown by our preaching. Let us give glory to God and show the living proof that we've received the Holy Spirit by preaching and bearing fruits. Grace be upon you from our God. I'd like to finish the sermon. Thank you very much.